So in our Abraham portion of Genesis, we saw that Abraham, who was promised a son, though him and his wife Sarah were having problems conceiving a child, Abraham takes matters into his own hands, takes one of his maidservants, Hagar, or Hagar, uh, who happens to be an Egyptian, okay, so she's not even, you know, one of, well, uh, well, anyways, she takes her, and with her, they have a son called Ishmael, and God's like, no, that's, trust me, that's not what I had in mind, okay, not what I had in mind. And so from that is the, the, the covenant, one of the signs of the covenant, that the practice of circumcision comes in. And now in Genesis 21, we're told that finally, and again, a lot, a lot has happened before then, but I won't get into it. Um, but finally, God's promise came true, and, and they have a son called Isaac, whom, again, which means God's laugh. Because, again, remember, Sarah laughed when she heard of the notion that she was going to have a son. She kind of laughed, laughed out of mockery, you know, sarcasm type of thing. Um, but God has the last laugh in all this. But she also noticed, okay, in today's first reading, that Isaac and Ishmael kind of come together. They have a bond. And now we see the human vices kind of come out. You know, Sarah's jealous of Ishmael. And she doesn't want to make sure that he doesn't have the inheritance, okay, of Isaac. Again, like I said a couple weeks ago, the, the kingdom of God is, is very messy. You know, it's not as clean cut as, as we would think it would be, you know. You know, often the people criticize the church and it's full of, full of sinners and hypocrites and stuff like that. And it's like, well, yeah, it's always been, you know, it's always been messy. You know, it's God redeeming sinners. So if sinners are part of the story of salvation, then, you know, there's always going to be some bad stuff that's going to come out of it. You know, so here Sarah is jealous and she wants Hagar and she wants Ishmael to go away. Okay, and so Abraham listens to his wife like any good husband and sends him away. But here, here's the catch in all this. Okay, and... I was thinking, as I was reading this story, I was thinking of Adam and Eve. And let me explain why. God promises Hagar and Ishmael that he's not going to leave them. That he's still going to be with them and his blessings are still going to be upon them. And same with Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve are banished from the garden, the first thing that God does is he, so, he sows loincloths or a as a way of saying that, that God's blessing and providential care is still upon them. And, you know, and I tell the same, kids, the same thing with the kids at Marion. They're, they're so worried about making the wrong decision and, and choosing the wrong college and major and direction in life. And I think those three instances, you know, with the, the high schoolers at Marion, with Adam and Eve, and with Hagar and Ishmael, you can all sum up into this one kind of important spiritual point. That no matter what decisions we make and no matter how bad these decisions are, it's not going to mess up God's overall plan of salvation. It's not going to, you know, God's not going to just toss his hands up in the air and be like, oh, boy, you really got me in this one now. You know, you know what I mean? Like, like you really done it now. It, whatever happens, God's blessing and care and guidance is still there. You know, so even though Abraham made the wrong decision, he took matters in his own hands, he, 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 he with, with Hagar, had Ishmael, it doesn't mean that the story for Abraham or Ishmael, that, that it's over yet, that God has somehow abandoned him. It doesn't mean, you know, that with Adam and Eve, because they're banished from the garden, that all of a sudden they're kind of lost and God's hand's not with them anymore. You know, and the same with the kids at Marion and their discernment, and the same with us. You know, no matter what choices we make, we worry about making the wrong choice. But really, I believe if we're really sincere and really seeking God's guidance, you know, that he will lead us. And whatever decision we make, even if it seems at that moment that it was the wrong decision, it's still not out of God's hands and out of God's control. You know, his ways and his mind and his infinite mind is far greater. So no matter how many bad choices we have, doesn't really mess up what God's going to do in our life. In fact, he might even make a lot more good out of it. May God bless you.